Now, the best thing about gardening is it is gardeners that are going to save the world, really, because we are in big trouble with our lack of pollinators. Most of our food is pollinated by hummingbirds, by butterflies, by bees, and we're not planting enough flowers to replace all the nectar that these uh, creatures need. So I'm begging you all to please plant more flowers that will bloom for long periods of time. And here's some tips for what to plant and how to keep them blooming all summer long and into the month of October. First of all, this is my favorite plant for the hummingbirds. It is called the bonfire begonia. The bonfire begonia is fantastic because it blooms in sun, in shade. You can overwinter the tuber um, if you want. And the hummingbirds absolutely love it. Uh, to keep this plant in bloom, the remember that you have to deadhead or remove some of the little flowers that have these little seed pods at the end of them. Here's a seed pod, a little wing seed pod. And even if you never get around to deadheading, the petals will fall off anyway. The bonfire begonia will continue to bloom as long as you fertilize. And I use a slow release plant food like Osmocote because that way you're encouraging leaf growth, which then makes more of these beautiful bright orange blooms, the bonfire begonia. So adaptable, anybody can grow this. Now, we also know the hummingbirds love fuchsias. Fuchsias are a little more difficult to grow, but the reason I want you to grow fuchsias anyway is because if you set out a hummingbird feeder, I know you hate to hear this, hummingbird feeders filled with sugar water are not healthy foods for the hummingbirds. That's like a dessert. That's like fast food. They much prefer the nectar from blooming plants. When it comes to fuchsias, to keep these things in bloom, you have to look for the berries. So this is what the berries look like. The berries are left after the flowers fall. The little green seed pod behind the blooms make these, these red berries. Pull these off and that is going to help the fuchsia continue to bloom all summer. Now especially in hot weather, you constantly are watering your fuchsias. That's why you have got to use a fertilizer all summer long. And again, I'm using a slow release plant food like Osmocote usually around the 4th of July, um, midsummer, I'll just sprinkle some more in the soil. And then the constant watering that takes these fuchsias uh, into this very long bloom stage, the Osmocote, every time you water, releases a little bit of fertilizer to keep them in bloom, to keep those hummingbirds happy. And finally, here is this really cool, these are, this is the new begonia, the Bolivia begonia, the giant begonia. I'm cutting off these, uh, spent stems just to keep it tidy and anything that that looks a little bit messy and these get so big don't be afraid of these giant Bolivia begonias that really draw in a lot of pollinators the bees the butterflies the hummingbirds if they get kind of leggy you can always just go to a node or a joint you see there's a joint kind of like a knuckle prune just above that joint use this as a lovely cut flower enjoy it outdoors because then the pollinators can still enjoy the nectar and then you'll be having an, a nice bushy plant and encouraging new growth. So you can see this dull leaf is the old growth and look at all this new growth that's coming because this part has already been pruned. So once again you're deadheading the old stems, any of the spent blossoms and then finally you will be adding another sprinkling of Osmocote around midsummer just to make sure you have enough nutrients. One more thing, on hot days, the pollinators need water. Here is a great way to provide that. Uh, a simple pie tin and a sponge uh, means the butterflies can sit on top of the sponge, the hummingbirds can get there without worrying about uh, it being too deep, the bees love it. If this isn't very attractive to you, consider your bird bath. If you will float great big flowers in your bird bath, like uh, clematis and roses and flat colored blooms, then the pollinators can come, especially the bees, you'll see them all grouping to float on top of the flowers and then dip their little snouts right into the, the water. So all these great tips, keep the flowers blooming, water your plants, fertilize your plants. It really is gardeners, they're gonna save the world by providing lots of flowers for our pollinators.